1987, this satellite won an Emmy. It was the same year the Golden Girls took home Best Comedy Series and Michael J. Fox won for his role in Family Ties. This may seem like a peculiar honor to bestow on a satellite, but this was no ordinary satellite. It revolutionized how satellites were used and by whom. It was called the Communication Technology Satellite, but is better known as Hermes. Just a quick reminder that small channels like mine need your support. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment. This will help convince the YouTube algorithms to recommend my videos and grow the channel. Anyway, the story of Hermes and its journey to Emmy stardom starts back in 1970. Legendary Canadian space guy and director of the National Research Council space programs, John H. Chapman was in Yellowknife with the Department of Northern Affairs to promote Canada's new and next series of geostationary communication satellites. These would bring TV and radio signals to the north from the south for rebroadcast. The event kind of backfired when attendees soundly rejected the scheme. A one-way pipeline of media from the south wasn't what they wanted. They wanted solutions for their communication needs in their own communities. Chapman took this criticism to heart and began to think of new ways that people could use satellite technology. The idea grew and by April 20th, 1971, it had crystallized into a joint experimental project between Canada's Department of Communications and National Research Council, the US's NASA, and the European Space Agency. It was called the Communication Technology Satellite, but more commonly known as Hermes. Canada's Communication Research Centre, the CRC, would design and build the satellite. The US would test and launch it, and Europe would supply some of the onboard equipment. Up until then, satellites used low-power 6 to 4 gigahertz signals that required very large ground antenna to receive them. This way the signals wouldn't interfere with existing microwave systems. The approach worked fine, however this feature made the technology largely inaccessible to the average person or community. The main design goal of Hermes was to produce a satellite that could broadcast high-powered signals that could be picked up by small, low-cost receivers. This new concept, pioneered by Chapman, was called a direct broadcast satellite and would permit high-fidelity satellite signals to be received by individual homes in remote or underserviced regions all across the country including the North. To achieve this goal, Hermes would need to develop some new technologies. The centerpiece of the satellite would be NASA's new high-powered, super-high-frequency, 200-watt traveling wave tube antenna. This was complemented by a 20-watt traveling wave tube antenna and low-noise receiver provided by the Europeans. These types of antennas created a very narrow 14 to 12 gigahertz radio beam, and so needed to be aimed carefully. Before Hermes, all satellites were spin-stabilized. This was cheap and easy, but was obviously incompatible with careful aiming of an antenna. So a means of stabilizing the satellite in orbit was required. There are a few different active stabilization methods satellites can use. The primary method used up to this point was to use a reaction control system. This is where small thrusters push the spacecraft around. This method uses up a lot of fuel and so limits the time that a satellite can operate. Because of this, experimental reaction wheels were used. This is where three orthogonal wheels spinning at high speed use changes in their angular momentum to rotate the spacecraft in any direction. This method is commonplace now, but Hermes helped pioneer it. The high power transmitter needed, well, high power. The European Space Agency provided the project with a 1200-watt folding solar array. The old spinning-style satellites were confined to mounting solar arrays on the exterior panels of the structure, limiting power. The new folding array types could be made much larger and folded up to take up a minimal amount of space at launch. This configuration is commonplace now, but again, Hermes helped pioneer it. The satellite itself was a 1.17 meter tall cylinder with a diameter of 1.8 meters. Two 1.3 by 6.5 meter solar arrays extended from the truncated sections on the sides. Mounted on one side of the cylinder was the rocket motor and on the other side were the antennas. 
the communication technology satellite was launched uneventfully on the 17th of January 1976 on board a Delta 2000 series rocket. It achieved a geostationary orbit at an inclination of 0.7 degrees. This allowed its antenna to reach 40% of the Earth's surface. Once in orbit, operation of the satellite was turned over to the Department of Communications. It was, at the time, the most powerful communication satellite in the world. Being an experimental satellite, many experiments were carried out with the platform. These can be grouped into three broad categories. Space technology, one-way broadcast, and two-way communications. I mentioned the main space technologies earlier. Active stabilization of a flexible body, high-powered folding solar arrays, traveling wave tube antenna, and the use of super high-frequency wavelengths. The one-way broadcast experiments mostly involved small, purpose-built, portable, low-cost, TV-receive-only terminals. 37 were built for testing in all environments. The most notable experiment was a broadcast of a hockey game to Canadian diplomats in Peru in 1978. It was the Stanley Cup game, so I guess the expense was justified. The BC Ministry of Education explored using the satellite to deliver remote education, and other experiments mostly centered around delivering one-way TV or radio signals and various technical tests. The really exciting experiments were the ones involving two-way communications. These experiments would respond directly to the criticism from Northerners during the INIC meeting. The most exciting of these was the University of Western Ontario and McMaster University's telemedicine experiments. This involved connecting Northern clinics to Southern hospitals and their expertise. Other experiments were about using telephone fax and data signals in remote regions. Many indigenous groups were involved. The Alberta Native Communication Society conducted Project Iron Star in 1977. The Kiwatin Communication Studies Institute and the Wawata Native Communication Society conducted the Wawata Satellite Radio Project in 1979. The Ministry of Education in Quebec and the University of Regina also conducted many community connection experiments under the umbrella project SAS-Quebec, mostly in 1978. The legacy of Hermes is still clearly visible on the roofs of houses all over the world. Direct broadcast TV satellite technology revolutionized how and where we could watch our favorite shows. And it was for this reason that in 1987, the Department of Communications and NASA received an Emmy for this immense contribution. I'd like to thank all the fans of this channel for sticking with me through this dry spell of videos. I won't be making them too fast from now on, but I've got a couple more in the pipeline. I also want to give a huge thanks to my Patreon members for sticking with me. It really means a lot.